The Argentinian submarine Santa Fe found itself in the crosshairs of relentless adversaries. From the deck of HMS Antrim, a Wessex helicopter descended upon its unsuspecting prey. The Wessex unleashed a thunderous assault, hurling depth charges into the depths below. Other British vessels nearby quickly dispatched more helicopters to support the pursuit. Among them were several Westland Wasps, the first British helicopters to see naval use. Decommissioned a few years before and brought back into battle to serve the British Navy once more, the Wasps were desperate to prove they still had some fight in them. Like a swarm, the Wasps unleashed a volley of AS-12 anti-ship missiles upon the enemy submarine. The missiles found their mark, exploding with devastating force and sending shockwaves through Santa Fe's hull. The damage to the submarine was too great, and the crew abandoned the ship. They knew the war would not end well if the Westland scouts and wasps were still in the air. Westland Helicopters Westland Works, or Westland Aircraft, had humble beginnings. The aircraft manufacturer was born in Yeovil, Somerset in 1915, during the turbulent years of World War I. At first, the company was a division of Petters Limited Company. Westland Aircraft was founded in response to government orders to ramp up airplane production for the increasing military urgencies of a new age of warfare. The company had an initial license to produce a small batch of seaplanes, but it quickly grew in importance during the post-war. After manufacturing several aircraft designs, Westland began producing its own for the civilian market. During World War II, the company helped the war effort by building Britain's most recognizable fighter, the Supermarine Spitfire. Decades later, the company began producing helicopters during the post-war years, right at the start of the Cold War. The first license came from the hand of the company that designed the world's first mass-produced helicopter, Sikorsky. In 1948, Westland Aircraft produced the Sikorsky S-51, becoming the Westland Dragonfly under Royal Navy and Royal Air Force service. The company followed this success by producing the Whirlwind, an English version of the Sikorsky S-58. While American involvement in Vietnam increased in the 1960s and tensions with the Soviet Union rose, Westland Helicopter grew more powerful as it merged with the rotary wing divisions of other companies. During this time, the company decided to produce its own helicopter design. It was the beginning of the Westland Scout, and later, the Wasp. The Prototype Westland Helicopter had over a decade of experience producing American helicopter designs. The merger with rotary wing divisions from other aircraft manufacturers only increased the company's expertise and confidence. The basis for Westland's first helicopter was the Saro P-531, an all-metal, five-seat helicopter designed and built by Saunders Row Limited, one of the companies that had merged with Westland in 1959. The P-531 was an enhanced version of the Saro Row Skeeter, a two-seat training and scout rotary wing aircraft. After acquiring Saunders, Westland made two additional prototypes of the P-531, doubling the power and making additional design improvements such as the inclusion of a skid undercarriage. The Blackburn Nimbus and the de Havilland Gnome engines powered the prototypes. In late 1959, the British Army Air Corps requested the production of a pre-series batch of the five-seat helicopter design. The first took to the skies in August 1960 without issues. After the initial flight, the Army Air Corps requested another batch and integrated the P-531 as the Scout AH Mark I helicopter. It was the beginning of the Westland Scout. After a few modifications for naval operations, the same design would be used for the Wasp. The helicopter had a length of 30 feet, a height of 8 feet, and a weight of over 3,200 pounds. The overall range was 322 miles. When it came to performance, the preliminary design had a rate of climb of 1,700 feet per minute and a service ceiling of 15,400 feet. Another of its impressive features was the Bristol Siddeley Nimbus 101 or Nimbus 102 turboshaft engine, both with 685 horsepower, enough to carry out any mission it was assigned to. The Twin Brother 
Airborne before the Wasp, the first Westland Scouts were delivered in March 1963 and quickly took over most of the light utility duties of the Army, such as search and rescue, training, observation, or liaison. The Scout had two front seats and a rear three-seat bench, which could be accompanied by a four-seat bench if the helicopter was modified with rear doors. The helicopter could carry two stretchers inside or outside on externally mounted pods for the search and rescue and casualty evacuation role. During those operations, the co-pilot seat could be reversed to tend to the injured being transported and provide medical support directly without taking up more precious cabin space. When configured for the light attack role, the scout could carry two L8A1 general purpose machine guns. These could be skid mounted or on the rear cabin. The gun packs carried 200 rounds for each machine gun and were mounted on a tubular spar fixed near the undercarriage legs. The scout was armed with four Nord SS-11 guided missiles for the anti-tank role. The sighting unit employed by scout crews was the AF-120, featuring 2.5 and 10 magnification. Additional armament was tested with the scout to make it as reliable and effective as the American Bell UH-1 Huey helicopter, one of the most recognizable aircraft at the time employed by the Americans in Vietnam. Some tests involved the Swing Fire anti-tank missile, General Electric's devastating 7.62mm minigun, the American M2 Browning machine gun, and the French AME 621 20mm cannon. Nevertheless, these weapons proved incompatible with the Scout and were not adopted. By 1968, Westland had produced over 150 Scouts. Besides the British, the Australians and the Jordanians also purchased some units for combat and rescue operations. The Sting of the Wasp Almost concurrently with the Scout, Westland Helicopter began the development of a navalized version for anti-submarine warfare. This variant was dubbed the Wasp and could take off and land from platforms on the rear decks of frigates and other warships. The Wasp was part of the Royal Navy's requirement for a manned torpedo-carrying helicopter, or match. The Wasp lacked sonar and functioned more as a standoff weapon to carry the torpedo and drop it where instructed. The Wasp featured a quadricycle undercarriage with lockable wheels and long-stroke oleo struts that could be towed inwards or outwards. In addition, the Wasp featured folding elements for shipboard storage, including the main rotor and the metal tail rotor. To complement its naval role, the Wasp featured a negative pitch, where the rotors created downward force to stick the helicopter to the deck when landing in rough seas. When the Wasp formally entered service in 1964, it became the first British helicopter designed to operate from frigates. It became a great way of extending the range and lethality of a British warship beyond its weapons. Internally, the Wasp contained more potent engines than the Scout, being powered by 710 horsepower Nimbus 103 and 104 engines. The Wasps mainly served with the 829th Naval Air Squadron and often worked in cooperation with Wessex HAS submarine hunters. The helicopters were retired in 1973, but made a comeback for the war against Argentina in 1982 during the Falkland Islands conflict. The Western Scouts were mainly used for reconnaissance and target evacuation. However, some were assigned to target artillery emplacements. Meanwhile, the Wasp was able to stretch its rotary wings and put its submarine hunting specialized avionics to good use. During combat operations in South America, a Wessex helicopter from HMS Antrim spotted the Argentinian submarine Santa Fe. The aircraft dropped depth charges and was swiftly joined by several wasps and a lynx. In this brief skirmish, the wasps fired several AS-12 anti-ship missiles and scored several hits, severely damaging Santa Fe and forcing the crew to abandon the ship near South Georgia. The wasps left no doubt that they were still fit to fulfill the role they were built for, submarine killers. Decades of Service Praised for its versatility and effectiveness when responding to missions on land and sea for over two decades, the WASP was a strong line of defense against the threats of terrorist attacks on British soil feared throughout the 1970s and 80s. Its remarkable comeback during the Falkland Islands War helped it become a favorite among aircraft enthusiasts. Several of the 133 Westland WASPs built would also become an integral part of naval aircraft task forces in other countries. 
even after the British decided to phase it out of service by the late 80s and substitute it with the Western Lynx and the Dutch following suit. In countries like New Zealand, Malaysia, Brazil, Indonesia, and South Africa, wasps continued to fly well into the 90s. Although their career was not as long as some iconic aircraft from the 20th century, the Scouts and Wasps paved the way for more powerful British helicopters that continue serving the Army and the Royal Navy. Thank you for watching our Dark Skies video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find out more about British helicopters and many other exciting stories of modern warfare. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.